Hi guys. Um, it's okay. Hey guys. So, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. So there's no way around it. I'm trying not to, but it, I'm just going to. So, um, a week ago, our little Frenchie died. Shit. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> it was very sudden and surprising. Um, a week before he died, we found out that he had a disease called IBDD. I guess first I'll, I'll, I'll say what happened. Alright. So, um, even before a week ago or whatever it's been, two weeks, mm -hmm. um, Clark has had health issues. So, um, ever since we got him, he, like, gets sick over, like, anything. And he had these weird issues that we didn't really know what the problem was, where he would, um, <laughs> he would start shaking, um, for no reason. And we thought maybe he got hurt, like, maybe, um, he was playing too hard or something and he got hurt and he just was, like... Um, shivering. Shivering from, like, being scared of getting hurt more or something. Like, we didn't really know why it was happening. And we took him to the vet for it, like, probably two years ago, I think. Yeah. We didn't know anything about this disease at the time. And clearly, the vet we were going to didn't know anything about the disease either. Mm -hmm. We just suggested maybe he hurt himself. We don't know what happened. Um, like, he plays really hard, so maybe he got hurt. And they were... I don't, like, I don't even remember the interaction, but... I know they didn't suggest anything to do with IBDD. They didn't think of it. We didn't know about it. A little under a year ago, I was watching another girl's video um, where her Frenchie got this disease, and it sounded like Clark. Um, and her video was all about... Um, how she had to rush her Frenchie to the emergency and get this emergency surgery um, on her back. Her Frenchie recovered and everything. She was like giving awareness of like how how to like prevent it. Prevent it yeah. So we started taking preventative measures just in case he had this because we didn't know and he hadn't had a reaction like he hadn't had the shivering or anything in a while mm -hmm. so we got rid of our bed frame um because it's like they can't they can't jump off, off like high surfaces stuff like that like yeah it's all about protecting their back basically from um getting a slipped disc um because yeah. apparently this disease um happens with a back injury and yeah. it it builds a material in their um along their spine somewhere that can cause neurological problems so we just started being like extra careful with handling him and yeah and um you know making sure he doesn't do active things off of the couch and yeah you know picking him up the way we picked him up and yeah. um we put things next to the bed so he could jump up and then eventually we got rid of our um, bed frame altogether so our bed was low like all these little things to just just in case he possibly had this yeah and it had been over a year no problem and then the, like two weeks ago he super suddenly suddenly just started having the shivering and it just and escalated he started limping, limping as well and yeah it didn't like I, I checked i remember um taking him out and he started like limping and i was like what why why are you like avoiding trying to step with his paw mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i checked his paw and i couldn't see anything at all like i thought maybe he like stepped on a thorn or something and but it, nothing seemed to be wrong and then and then he was okay after like 
a minute. So I was like, okay, it was nothing. And then the next day, his legs went numb. Yeah, he he had like a like an episode, like a paralyzing episode. Right. Where yeah. he just froze and it was like something horrible was happening to him, but nothing was happening to him. Right. And we were just trying to console him and, and keep him still because he was kind of like thrashing around trying to move, but he couldn't really move. It was right. horrible. Yeah, it was really weird and he his like we never seen him like we it was like he yeah. was reacting to pain, but it was different. If he were to get hurt somehow, he would a dog would probably like yelp or something. But it would just be that. Yeah, but like he, he was just sitting there and he just freaked out over nothing. Like it was right. just he was kinda just freaked out, his mouth went really wide. Mm-hmm. It's like he got hurt, but right. nothing was hurting him. It was really weird. We rushed him to the emergency vet and I told the vet I think he might have this because over a year ago he had a, a, like a sort of similar episode but nothing nearly this bad um and so right at this time he already lost the use of like his his back legs weren't moving at all yeah his he back legs didn't work anymore. at all the, it was like they were paralyzed they were paralyzed mm-hmm. basically and so the vet confirmed that he did have IVDD. Mm-hmm. There's five stages to this disease, and oh, okay. Clark was stage five, so he was already the worst level. And right, right. This is all like so confusing to us because we're like, he was just like totally normal a minute ago, and all of a sudden he's having all these, like he's stage five of a horrible disease. Like, yeah, it's very confusing. Right. And so the vet told us that there is a surgery that they would have to do on his spine um, to remove some mass. And so after learning a bit more about IVDD, apparently this um, calcium or something on the spine hardens and causes problems. I don't really understand it, but the vet said that um, they basically had a 48 hour window to operate to have a 50 to 60 percent chance of fixing the problem so like it wasn't a guarantee that it would work and it would cost ten thousand dollars to do it (laughs) we don't have ten thousand dollars not only that but he said 48 hour window from the onset of the disease which he said might have already happened when he had those earlier episodes right. years ago. So it, w- it could have been an even lesser chance that it would have worked. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have did it. <laughs> I would have tried if I could. He said, you know, get him fitted for a wheelchair. And, like, we were thinking, okay, we can't afford this surgery, but we're going to do whatever we can do. So we got, like, these... Um, medications for him and they Mm -hmm. showed us how to do physio on his legs Mm -hmm. and so we're thinking okay we'll get him a wheelchair we'll do what we got to do and we ordered a wheelchair and everything and uh, over that week every day he was declining and it was just getting worse and worse and then we started discussing maybe doing a GoFundMe, even though it's a long shot, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a heck of a lot of money for a GoFundMe. Yeah, like $10,000 is a lot. To ask for. But, like, we were like, we'll give it a try and just see what happens. So I was waiting for a quote, like a, an exact quote from the vet um, to find out how much put it for because I didn't want to ask for more than what it would be right and yeah so that they took too long basically and I didn't get the number in time but it wouldn't wouldn't have mattered because we wouldn't have got ten thousand dollars in a day um on the day that Clark died 
I knew, I don't know about you, but I, I knew that it would be that day because he just, it was obvious that that was like his day. And, um, so we, we took like as many care, care precautions as possible. We laid him out on the floor. We tried setting him up in the crate. We we had him propped, like, with all these blankets surrounding him to keep him yeah. still. We had bundles of, like, rolled up blankets and towels. Try to, like, put him in a comfortable position where mm-hmm. his neck would be um, supported. Yeah. And his back would be, like, straight. straight yeah. And um, we spoon-fed him. We we did dog diapers. We had, like, yeah. knee pads. Because um, since since he lost, like since he was paralyzed he lost the motor functions like, like his muscle functions so you know his his um bladder and stuff was out of control like it was not under his control anymore she would like lift lift his like uh, his body up and then i would try to see where his bladder is and i'd squeeze that area and then like try to let she like, had to pee yeah. for him basically basically like, yeah trying to like because yeah. he couldn't do it anymore. And, like, all of this isn't to be gruesome or, like, you know, like, give sad details. It's because it's, we had no idea that this was, okay, that this disease yeah. existed. And... This is more like an awareness. Yeah, thing. we want people to know. Like, it's not just a Frenchie thing. Apparently it can happen to lots of breeds. And a lot of breeds that small. have short legs. Yeah. Like... Small um, breeds. Dachshunds. Yeah. But even I was reading that it can happen to large breeds mm-hmm. as well. Um, so it's like just something to be aware of. like, And and also, like if we had known, maybe we could have handled things a little different earlier on. Right. Um, or even if you have a breed like that, that you could be careful with their back from the get-go. Like don't let them play too hard. Don't let them jump off the bed. Like mm-hmm. things that... Like, I'm just surprised, honestly. Like, (laughs) I've had dogs my whole life, and I'm, like, that person. People come to me to ask me questions. Like, if something's... If they are new to having a pet, like, people call me and ask me questions for help. And I've never heard of this, like, at all. And I'm just surprised that I didn't know anything about it. So, I feel like people should be aware. And... Hopefully this... You know, so that you can look for the signs and then, you know, catch it before it yeah. happens or before it gets any worse. Or, like, you know, just <laughs> be or careful just, from just the beginning. Pre- like, yeah. preventative measures in the first place. You know? Basically, day by day through the week, he just got more paralyzed up his body. <clears throat> until he was... Until he couldn't even move his, like, anything below his neck. Yeah, and even and that, you leg, could tell something. that was hurting him to move his neck. Right. And... It was, it was, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Mm. You okay? Yeah. Um... <clears throat> so, on the last day, um... He... He got to a point where... He was so um, floppy that we could carry him. And, you know, we had been keeping him perfectly still for that week. um, Aside from, you know, when we had to move him or, like, to change his his little diaper. Um, And, you know, we just wanted to keep him steady so he didn't hurt himself. But... On the last day, he was he was movable, which was strange, but he had no function. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, Ellis, thank God, thought to um, go cuddle him in the bed because I wanted to all week long. I, I just wanted to cuddle him, but I didn't want to hurt him. Mm-hmm. So... We, it was like 12 o'clock last Friday. Yeah, it was like during my lunch hour. So, he, 
wrapped him up and brought him to bed and we just like hugged him together for like 40 minutes 45 minutes and it was like nearing the end of his lunch so we're like okay let's come out here we sat right here and we just kept hugging him right here together like just holding him like a baby on this very couch like right how right here and um in before his lunch hour was over it was like clark was waiting (laughs) dear god (laughs) it's like he was waiting for us to snuggle him so he could let go and I know, like, this might seem like, like, people who don't have dogs or I don't even know, like, it might seem, like, hokey or something, but I, like, it was very purposeful. I felt like it was exactly his choice that he wanted to be hugged by both of us and that he felt okay to go at that point. so um it was it was all very sudden and unexpected and he was only three which is like really hard to wrap my head around we have five animals (laughs) in this house um and um he's the youngest one and the most energetic and happiest and full of life and like everything so it's like really hard <laughs> um uh, so I guess the biggest thing the biggest importance that I want people to know about IVDD is just that I guess also if you're gonna have a dog it's very important to have an emergency savings <laughs> or pet insurance which I don't know much about I don't have it myself I've always paid out of pocket for things that have come up right I've never had anything come up that was 10,000 freaking dollars um which really is just like disturbing that's, to me that that's yeah. even it's just so much <laughs> insane it's just something to be aware of i guess and if you're gonna get a purebred dog to really do your homework on the breeder and the family history of illness and ask questions ask if Mm -hmm. if they've ever had things like this you know or even the breed itself Oh, yeah. You know, dig yeah. deep and find out what why that breed is bred that way and, you know, things like that. That's something in... And, you know, when I was researching Frenchie, IVDD didn't come up as one of the health concerns. We got Clark from young breeders. Like, they couldn't have been doing it for very long. And, you know, I'm grateful that we had Clark and that we had the time with him. Um... And I wouldn't change it, even though we went through this, you know, but it is definitely a learning experience. The um, history of the lineage is really important to know and going to experienced breeders who have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. (laughs) Rest in peace, Clark. And we'll miss him. Yeah, I made a video before about things to know before you get a Frenchie, and this is something to add to that list. I really warned people a lot about how noisy Frenchies are in that video because I know a lot of people who find it annoying after a little while, um, hearing them (laughs) snorting every second and snorting, snoring, farting, just constantly (laughs) making bodily noises. Um, 
and because a lot of Frenchies get given up because people don't realize how annoying they are <laughs> and but I loved all those things and I like now that we don't have all those sounds it's very sad <sighs> it's very noticeable it was a large presence in the house basically yeah like the most life actually in this house like the most um the most energy for sure i'd say if like you combined all the energy of like all the four other animals compared to him he still had more <laughs> we're just gonna put together a little uh tribute of clark memories which is gonna be really hard <laughs> to watch for me but um we owe him that honor and I um, hope you enjoy seeing his cuteness and uh, I guess that's it for now we love you Clark we're welcoming a new member into our family yeah. it's a boy yeah. a son <laughs> a son and his name is Clark 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 Kent <laughs> and he's a Frenchie! Oh. oh, look at that! Oh, yeah! Oh, look at that! Oh, he's a good boy! Oh, yes! Lick her face! Oh, lick my face! Oh. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, yeah! That's right! Love, 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 French bulldog puppy! Oh, And he sounds like a piggy! Oh, look at that! Oh! Do you hear it? Oh, he's a piggy boy. He's a piggy, piggy boy. All right, everybody in? Lana, look. Everybody say cheese. He just, cheese. He just wants Lana.
Thank you.